we're going to talk about KL, and then I've separated by KL over X and KL over I. I wanted to kind of go over that in more detail. Um, and so the point is, is that the, the column can bend in either axis, right? So here, because there's no, I first asked myself, is, that, is there anything bracing it? And the answer is no. Okay, great. Um, so here, K, we know that its top is fixed. Bottom is pinned. Pin, pin, no. Fixed, no. Fixed pin, yes. K is 0 0.7. So I have Zero point seven. Zero point seven. L is going to be fourteen. It's twelve to get it into inches. Okay, and that essentially would be your answer. Okay, so the question is here: How do we do it? Um, now, here it's saying that it is braced. And just to clarify, in all these problems that we do, if I say it's going to be braced, at a minimum, it's always going to be braced in the weak axis, right? So it's braced in X direction, which um, means that it stops it from buckling, uh, buckling about the Y axis, right? Because if this wants to, and keep in mind, if I was to cut this and take a look at it, looking down at it, it would look like this. Okay, so if I was to, does everybody see that? Who, who needs, who's not clear on that? I want to make sure. What are you trying to clarify for us, Professor? I want to make sure that everybody understands and that can make the, um, can understand that this line right here is this section that we see here. Does everyone see that when I, when, when it says section, that that's what it is if you were to look at it? That's Some people think it's like, sorry, say it again. The beam? No, the column. I, I'm, well, okay, so let me try to draw it. So I just want to make sure that, you know, some people think this is like two separate problems. I'm like, no, it's the same problem. So if I was to kind of, let's, that's my eye with eyelashes. If I was to try to look at it like a little from here, it would look like that. And let's see. Right, if I'm looking down here, this is the top of my column. That's the bottom of my column. Do you guys see that? I don't know if I'm making it more confusing. Yes, I think so. And so if I'm bracing at the center, right, what that means is at the center, there's a beam coming in. I'm not an artist, that's the problem. And it's bracing it so that it cannot buckle like that. And so because this is right here, what it means is that it's gonna buckle like this and like that. Is that supposed to be uh top view of it yeah it's it's what i'm doing is that it's like a top view kind of looking down okay right I, i'm trying to draw in 3d and it's obviously not that great but the idea is um and so let me kind of hopefully that kind of clarifies things but if not then it is what it is 
So in solving this, what I'd like to do is I would like to draw what we call deflected shape, which is how is it going to, in what shape would it buckle, okay? So I'm going to say in the x direction and y direction. So you have one case where Scale okay, over x, it's going to buckle like that. And because here it's got a, a brace, means that it's kind of like a pin support, it's going to buckle like that. So therefore, oh shoot. pin pin is equal to 1.0 times the length is 28 feet times 12 to get it into inches. That's going to be your answer. Okay. KLY It's, oh, sorry, I, I take it back. It's fixed pin, which is 0.7. Oh, shoot. Okay. Now, KLY. It's pinned fixed pinned. So you actually have KLY here zero point seven times fourteen feet times twelve. This is pin pin, which is 1.0, right? Because it's pinned, lightsaber, pinned, pinned, and then you're gonna go up here and say it's 1.0, and that's why you have K equal to 1.0. And the L is gonna be times 14 feet, times 12. That is your answer. Okay. Any questions before we go to the next one? All those values are given, right? Yeah, all, everything is given, right? You're given the length on the side, you're given the K on the side, right? Okay. Any questions? Is is that only for a fixed to pin beam? Sorry, um, it, it, it's a it, it's a it, it's a column, right? So when you say beam, is that the brace? Oh, I meant, I meant just overall what it is. I'm sorry, I, I don't understand your question. What's your question? Oh, I know. Never mind. Um, professor, I have a question. Yes. Would the calculations change if it was either both like a pinned pin or if they were both fixed or if it was just flipped? And that. So, sorry. Maybe what she, we should do is go over a couple more problems and maybe it'll start to click. How's that sound? And then we'll come back. Right? Because I don't think okay, I've done enough, cool. enough example for everybody. Okay. All right, so that's that. Right here, we have a brace and it's into 
x-axis, which means that um, it, re it stops this rotation, right? It inhibits that rotation, right? Because if it wants to rotate about this, right, you see how this brace stops it? Do you guys see that? Yes. Okay. So here, in this case, we know that this is fixed. And then this, this will be posted as a solution. So I don't feel like we need to be uh, screenshotting this. So that's fixed and fixed, right? So then we have um, x-axis. Y axis. And what we do is we say we have a fixed, fixed, okay, it's 0.5, okay? So here, what it's the way it's gonna deform Remember, it's 90 degrees. I, I just want to make sure that um, you guys understand this deflected shape because remember, if it's fixed, it's got a 90 degree right at that point, and it'll start to curve. We, we talked about this many times. And the reason why I like to bring it up because this is actually um, one of the questions that came up. Um, it's not exactly the same as this question, but the concept's the same that I was being asked. Um, during an interview for one of the, I'm not gonna tell you what department, but it's um, um, it's for one of the city departments and it was actually a, a written test that I had to do right in front of them. It's kind of weird because it's like three people in front of me asking me to go solve the problem. Um, obviously I nailed it. Um, and But it was based off of this, do you understand this concept of deflected shape, right? So that's how it would buckle. It would maintain that 90 degree right at that point. I do like a different color because it's misleading. Maintains 90 degree, maintains 90 degree. And so the question is, well, how do we know it's not gonna buckle that way? Right? And the answer is you don't. So you could actually sit, draw it so that it buckles the other way. Because um, when it comes to axial compression, meaning that the load is being applied this way, it's, it's literally a coin toss whether it goes one way or the other way. Anyway. Right? Oh, so how do we solve it? Okay. So I got this really cool pen tip for my Apple Pencil. So it allows me to write a little better instead of slipping all over the place. And L, we said it was 28. And the reason why I do feet to inches and I kind of throw that in there because if you were to solve the problem, like find out what the buckling stress is, find out the buckling, blah, 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 it's always in, uh, it's always in inches, not feet. So we always want to um, be able to write that. Okay. And so the next one
turn. Oh, you know, th this should have been drawn more like this. Um, so we know that this is fixed. Um, and we go to look for it is fixed pinned, right? Fixed, fixed pinned. Any questions? No, okay, so let's go on to the next one. Okay. Oh, okay, so it's gonna be interesting. So in this case, So we know that kx lx is equal to k is equal to 1.0 because it's pin pin. L is going to be 28 feet times um, 12. Okay. In this case, Pin roller doesn't really matter. It's the same idea. Um, the idea is that we look at this as one column, and this one we look at it as another column. So we know that k y l y is equal to its pin pin, and that's also pinned. So this section is pin, which is 1.0 times 14 times 12. Any questions? Professor, Angelica is asking, where do you um, place your recorded lectures? Like, where can we find them on the, on the Dropbox? <laughs> uh, I, I, I haven't uploaded any, and I don't know where they go. Um, they, they go it goes in the cloud. I haven't. Um, maybe this one we could upload it. Um, should this be uploaded? Yes. As, yes, please. Okay. I will remember to do it for this one. Yes. Okay. Any questions on this? No questions, everyone's clear. Can you zoom out really quick? Yeah, of course. Thank you. Oh, and then what 
I didn't draw here and what I should have done is um, So all we're really doing in this part is just looking for the KL or X and Y. Yeah, the idea is that from that point, it's kind of plug and chug, if you think about it, right? Because if we look uh, at it, um, I think you guys know how to do pi squared on your calculator, right? Yeah. I think you guys can put Young's modulus, right? And so I've left the R out because it's just, again, plug and chug. But really where people get lost in is this concept right here. So the whole point of this homework problem was to sharpen our pencil to understand what effective length is. Okay. Make sense? Yeah. Yeah, and this is a, a new homework exercise that I've created for this class. Um, my previous classes didn't have this, and um, this helps to clarify the problem because the, the issue is that um, if you look at this problem really quick, they kind of look all the same, <laughs> but they're all different. And so by taking time to kind of go over each one like that, I think it's helpful. So I it's hope. basically just trying to, uh, to identify if it's fixed or pin and which how it's going to K to use, right? Yes, and it's also talking about directionality, right? So if you were to hold a credit card, right? Right, we're going okay. back to that example. Oh, OK. Press on it, right? It always is going to buckle at one location, right? Yes, yeah. Whether it's you know left side, right side. But it's never, so you notice that when you, when, you, when you compress your credit card, it never, if you look at the cross section, it's always going to, if, if you're holding it up down, like, it's always going to buckle in the, um, the, the left to right direction if you have it. It's kind of hard how you're holding it. But, but it's obvious that it's always going to go in one direction, right? It's never going to go in what we call the strong axis. It's always going to go in what we call the weak axis, OK? And so I should clarify that. Um, so when I say X axis, just to clarify is that it's the moment or the buckling along that axis. And yes, it is confusing. And that's why I'm taking the time to explain this. Any other question? Uh, professor, so the whole point of the brace is just to pretty much counter the, I guess, the buckling to make sure it doesn't rotate either way. Yeah, so, okay, so if, if you can, um, if you can get a credit card right now and force it to buckle, can you, can you try that by getting a credit card right now? Yeah. Okay, and let me know once you got it to buckle. Yeah, I got it to buckle. Okay, great. So now, with your other hand, hold the middle of the credit card and then... Um, try try not to let it buckle right at your your fingers where you're holding in the middle of the credit card. Now try to apply the load. I applied the load and it's straightening it. But if I apply too much load, then it buckles the other way. C correct. But it's still... So in other words, right now, let's kind of draw what's going on. Oh, man. Oh, let me just go ahead and export this. So really the question is, 
What are we doing? Right. So if you had your credit card, and if you guys, if everybody can do this, you will see what's going on. Okay. Um, try to get a credit card out. Let me know when you do. I have one. Yeah? Yeah. Okay. So the idea is this. We apply the load here and you're gonna do this to your fingers. It's either gonna go that way or that way. Does that, does that look sound right? Yeah. Okay. Now, what I'd like you to do is with your finger, hold it so that it does not go in that direction. Does that make sense? Uh, yes. you, have to, you have to pinch it with your other finger, right? Right. So the idea is that this finger is stopping it, what we call bracing it, so that it doesn't go in that direction. So do that and apply the load. Now, theoretically, what would happen is that we're going in here and we're bracing it making it like a pin connection. And if you're doing it right, it's gonna look like that. Well, theoretically, it's gonna be at the center. And what you'll notice is that it requires a increased amount of load, a lot larger load, in order for you to feel that, in order for you to get it buckled. It's pretty hard. Right. You guys feel that? Yes, yes, yeah. yes, yes, yes. Okay, great. So now the question is, If I apply this really large, large, large load, when, when would I be able to make it buckle on the other axis, which is this way? You guys see that? Um, man, it looks like it's the same way. Um, I can see the difference. Yeah, so it's, it's gonna, if we were to kind of project that line outwards, it would be along that way, right? And so the thing is, is that, and that's gonna be in that direction, right? So tell me, so I want you to, your fingers, grab as much as possible so that it is braced in this direction and tell me at what load could you get it to buckle in that direction. You guys try it? I'll give you like two minutes to do that. Let me know when you're able to get it to buckle the other way. I was able to get it to buckle the other way, but it's like harder to get it to buckle the other way. It's twice the amount of work, I guess. Wait, wait, wait hold on, hold on. Okay. Let me make sure we, we are understanding this. We have A, condition A, which is the easy. B is definitely harder. What we're trying to achieve is C. You got it to buckle in the C direction with your credit card? Like creating a C? Yeah. No, see, it's 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 in the, uh, so it's gonna, you're not seeing this diagram, right? Oh, I see, like making yeah. it straight from there the top and then bumping it, okay. You, you see how 
you have this C shape, right? Right. Right. I'm, I want it to go the other way in this direction. Buckle that way. This is buckling in this way. You see that? Yeah. Anybody able to successfully do it? Let me know. Anybody successful? Anybody? Somebody said no on the chat. Okay, so we got one no. Anyone successful? Two no. No. Two no's, okay. No. Three no's. I, I have a big smile. Just can so you show it? Can you? Can, can I you do can't it? Do it right. Exactly. Oh, there we go. Because you cannot. Because I didn't and try. Why, and that's why it's called the strong axis. It's, in other words, theoretically, could you? Yes, you could. But it requires so much force that what's going to happen is your fingers are going to get, you're not going to be able to do it. Right. Okay. It's not going to happen. And so that is what we're trying to do when we're trying to do this is that what I'm doing is I'm rotating the credit card different directions for X and Y X being the strong axis, Y being the weak axis. Does it start to click? Does it kind of make sense? Yes, no, no, yes. Yeah, it makes more sense. And so, yeah. Um, and, and so if I was to kind of draw on this a little more, if we were in the case of the I-beam, That's what it would be. So it's always going to be easy for it to buckle one direction. You see how I'm drawing the column now in 3D? Does the strong axis have to do with the length of it? No. no it has okay. to do with the moment of inertia. Mm -hmm. So it doesn't matter whether the x the x axis is shorter than the, the y axis. It's just the moment well, of sorry, inertia. Sorry, sorry, I take it back. I take it back. That was the whole point of this, right? Is that if we if we were to brace it in one direction and not the other direction, you notice that as you having the credit card, you'll probably load that in w one of the axis, you don't have to brace it because it never buckles about that axis. Do you see that or feel that? Yeah. Exactly. So that's why um, we refer to the X axis as a strong axis because you can go ahead and brace it, but it's not going to govern. Not that it would never govern. At some point it would, right? Because what I would do is theoretically say, hey, you know what? Let me put a support here. Let me put a support here. Let me put support here. Let me put support here. Some point here. Support here, support here, support here. I have all this infinite amount of support. That means that the x-axis will start to govern. Okay. And that's why in the homework problem, when you guys are solving, you're, going, you're being asked, and also on the midterm, you will be asked to solve for the x-axis and the y-axis, and you'll see that um, one is larger than the other, right? And the weaker one is what's going to govern because it's going to 